When you've got a knee pain patient come into clinic as a physiotherapist or physical therapist, how do you work out what's going on with them? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through the special tests you can use for the knee to differentiate between different knee pathologies to help you out with your assessment and your treatment. Okay, so for patellofemoral joint pain, the first test we've got is a Clark's test. So for this test, what we're going to do is if we come onto the knee and create an inferior pressure through the patella, and then ask Kate to contract her quads to so squeeze down into the bed and relax. What we can also do is create a compressive force on the patella and ask Kate to do the same thing, so squash down into the bed and relax. If you get pain underneath the patellofemoral joint, that would be an indication of a positive test. Also with patellofemoral joint pain, if you do a squat, uh, so functional testing, a single leg squat or a squat, you'd expect pain to be localised around the patella region of the joint when you do these tests. So for McMurray's test, what we're going to do is bring the leg into flexion and then for the medial um, meniscus, we're going to laterally rotate the tibia and then we're going to come into, you can give a slight valgus and then come into a extended position of the knee and you'd expect to feel some medial joint pain when you did that. For the lateral meniscus, from a flex position, we're going to medially rotate the knee. And this one will come into a slightly more varus position as well, you can create, and then extend the knee down. And again, with this one, what we'd be looking for is a pain around the lateral aspect. Now you can do a bit of a scoop from medial to lateral in this flex position as well. So coming from the tibia being externally rotated to internally rotated or lateral rotation to medial rotation. And I quite like sometimes as well to grab underneath the heel to do this one. And you can do that even in different ranges of motion as well. And that would be a McMurray's test. So positive tests would be pain in and around the joint line, either medial or laterally, depending on where the injury is. Also with medial meniscal tears, we've got our joint line palpation. So we're just going to bring this knee up into 30 degrees. And then if we can palpate, find the patella, find the joint line, and then just palpate medially along the joint line, through the fat pad, patella tendon, fat pad on the lateral side and then we would palpate laterally as well. So again medial meniscal tears you'd expect to find on the medial side of the knee. Um, more painful on palpation would be a positive test. So Apley's distraction test for the medial meniscus would be where you would first of all um, rotate the tibia internally and externally and see whether there was any pain. Then you can compress through externally and internally rotate with compression and see if there's pain and if there was pain doing this if you were to then come up and hold the upper thigh down with your leg distract through the knee and then do your external and internal rotation with a meniscal pathology what you'd expect is that with the distraction and rotation there would be less pain because you're not getting those compressive forces through your meniscus. So a positive test for the, the distraction test would be less pain on the distraction and rotation than there is with compression and rotation. So for Thessalies, what we're going to do is hold in the patient's hands. If you stand on one leg, okay, so stand onto your left leg. And then what we're going to do is get the, you to rotate. So rotate the right knee round to one side and row round to the other side. And keep rotating through. That's perfect. So that test would be for the meniscus on the standing leg. A positive test would be pain in the meniscus when you do that test. A duck walk test would be where you get someone to go into a deep squat position and then you get them to walk forwards and backwards on their tiptoes. So go down onto your tiptoes, full, full squat, down onto your tiptoes and then just walk yourself forwards and walk yourself backwards. This puts a lot of compression through your meniscus, so just be careful with who you choose to do this with. A Lachman's test for the knee is another commonly used test for the ACL. So if you um, support the femur and then um, support the tibia and grab the tibia, what we're going to do is create a 
PA force, so pulling in this direction and feel for the integrity of that ligament. Again, if you've got someone that, that you're struggling with their um, leg or the heaviness of their leg, then you can relax it onto your leg. And then from there, it's just that pull through the leg. And then you see whether there was laxity on this side compared to the other side um, and general laxity and end feel, whether there's a, a distinct end feel or whether it feels loose. And that would be an indication potentially of an ACL injury. So for a pivot shift test of the leg, um, what we're going to do is take the leg into about 30 degrees of abduction. We're going to grab underneath the heel and then create a internal rotation of the foot. Then we're going to just create a bit of compressive load and a little bit of a valgus force on the knee. And then we're going to take the knee up into flexion and extension. A clunk or thunk when you do this movement would be positive for an ACL injury. For ACL tears, you've got the anterior draw test. So for this test, we can come and just sit onto the foot to stabilize, bring the thumbs just onto the, the joint line area, hands behind the knee joint, and then we're just literally gonna pull in a forceful manner towards yourself. So a PA pull. I'm gonna look at laxity on one side compared to the other side. And that would be an indication if there was lax on one side of a potential ACL injury. Ligamentous wise, we've also got our varus and valgus um, tests for the knee. So for our um, medial collateral ligaments, we're gonna bring the knee up 30 degrees of flexion. We're gonna hold around the joint line and then create a valgus stress. You can do this while palpating medially as well. And you can do this in different positions, nice and relaxed, okay? You can do this with fully extended knee as well, where you wouldn't expect much in, term, in the way of translation. For the varus test, you would then do the same thing, but you're gonna go the opposite way. So I'm gonna basically hold um, underneath the joint line and I'm taking the knee that way. So I'm basically creating a varus force. It's the opposite of our, of our valgus. And again, you can palpate around the ligaments on the outside of the knee and you're looking for excessive movement on one side compared to the other side. So that'd be for your medial and your lateral collateral ligament. Posterior sag sign of the knee, we'd come up into 90 degrees, 90, 90 at the hip and knee, and we would look for a posterior sag, so dropping of the shin, which would indicate potentially a PCL or a posterior cruciate ligament injury. So you're looking for that sulcus in this area, that would be a positive sign for this test. So for the dial test, for posterolateral corner injuries of the knee, what we're going to do is 30 degrees, the, uh, 30 degrees flexion of the knees and then maximal external rotation and have a look um, at the range of motion when you do that. Then we're going to take the knees to 90 degrees and again maximally externally rotate the feet. And what we're looking for is at 90 degrees of flexion, the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, comes in and aids to help with this. So if you've got one side, the symptomatic side in particular, being much more external rotation, so a lot more here compared to what you have at 90 degrees, that would be a positive test for the posterolateral corner injury, and you might have pain as well. To assess for a fat pad injury, what you would do is take the knee to about 30 degrees of flexion, and then you palpate either side of the patella tendon where the fat pad is situated, both medially and laterally, and see whether there's pain in this area. Then you would extend the knee fully, and for purposes of this video, I'll just do it on this knee, and you would again do the same thing. So you would come to the patella tendon, and you, you would palpate medially and laterally and you would see if there was more pain on extension. If there was more pain and tenderness on extension than there was in flexion, it would indicate potentially a bit of inflammation of the fat pad. For pes and serinus bursitis, a test we can use would just be palpation of the actual um, area. So medially you come onto the insertion, um, the pes and serinus area, uh, and you would palpate through that region and pain would be a positive test for potentially some pes anserinus bursitis. So for the patella apprehension test, if we bring the leg to 30 degrees of flexion at the knee, and then what we're gonna do is come onto the medial um, side of the patella, and we're gonna push laterally, 
and what a positive test would be apprehension or pain or a feeling that they don't want you to um, do that movement with the patella. A stroke test for a fusion of the knee would be that we brush the knee medially. So you come onto the medial aspect of the knee and you would brush up and across. You would then brush laterally and you'd be looking in the medial aspect for fluid to transfer into that area. That would be a positive sign that you've got some effusion of the knee. Hopefully you found that video really useful. If you did, then the one on the screen now will be awesome, all about hip special tests and how you can differentiate those conditions. If you like this sort of stuff, subscribe and click the bell icon and that way you won't miss any of our future videos on physiotherapy and fitness. And I will see you guys on the next one. Cheers for watching guys.